Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Today I want to tell you about how I got started with spinning. Um, spinning wool, that is. Um, when you start a sheep farm and you start to become inundated with fiber that you're growing, of course there's something that you want to do with it. And a lot of our yarns actually get processed off farm at small commercial mills around the state. Um, but I was interested in what happens um, with that process in, our, in learning about that in more detail and um, decided to take up hand spinning to kind of get in better touch with, with that process. Um, so I started on a spindle, a handheld spindle, and that method of starting is nice because it kind of breaks everything down into steps and lets your fingers get the feel for drafting before you're incorporating your feet in treadling. Um, and that was very valuable. Once I kind of got the hang of that, I was able to start on a wheel. And that process went not great. Um, part of it was an equipment issue. I really felt like um, I was fighting with the wheel that I had at that time. And it was a very nice wheel. It was a high-end model um, imported. But something about it and I just weren't a good match for each other. Um, I tell people that getting a spinning wheel is kind of like shopping for a used car or getting a bicycle. You have to get one that fits you. It might not necessarily be the most expensive type. Um, so I was having trouble with that and I sort of let that struggle um, play out over a couple of years. And finally, um, got a little frustrated and said, you know, I'm going to try some other wheels. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, Jane Woodhouse, um, uh, who will be coming up in an, in a, an interview at some point on the series, um, she's also a dealer for a company called Shocked, which is made in the U.S. They make looms and they make spinning wheels. And I had tried a Shocked model spinning wheel at, um, at a fair, um, it was one that my mother brought for demonstration, and I really liked it. So I asked Jane if she could bring another model to an event that was coming up, and she did. And I sat down, and from the first moment, it was just so much easier. It was like, oh, where have you been this whole time that I've been trying to learn to spin? So, um, of course, I bought that wheel from her, and I have been spinning um, more regularly since then. We do have a spinning group that meets once a month, and... Um, I don't always make it to that, but when I do, that's you know a good chunk of my spinning time. Um, so the moral of that story is, you know, don't think it's you necessarily. It could be the equipment that you have, whether your wheel might not need to be oiled, adjusted. Maybe there's a part missing if it's a used wheel, and it, you know it sort of works, but it sort of doesn't work. Um, get a friend with more experience to look it over for you, or take it into a shop. There are shops that work on wheels. Um, and you can find those on the internet and just get them to give it, you know, a thorough cleaning and make sure there's no little, you know, pins or tension or pieces or something that might be missing. Um, and then if you're looking for a wheel, the same thing. If you're not as experienced, make sure you take a friend or someone with you wheel shopping um, who can advise you, especially if you're looking at a used wheel. Um, buying a used wheel is a great way to get into the market for not as much money as a new one. So I do advise you to look on Craigslist and eBay and you know places like that. Um, even in local yard sales, sometimes you can find wheels. But um, don't just buy one without being able to sit down and actually spin on it and you know possibly have that more experienced friend um, try it out and give it a good look over. Um, another great resource that I found is a new spinner is this book called Yarnitecture, and it's been, um, it's by Julian Moreno. It's been heavily reviewed other places, so this isn't meant to be a, a further review of this book, but I've just personally found it very helpful in my practice. Um, she talks about um, different types of spinning techniques used to create different styles of yarn, specifically for different kinds of hand knitting projects, and she even has patterns in here for hand spun yarns so you know immediately okay I've, I've made this lumpy bumpy yarn it's a two ply what could I knit with it oh I could make this sweater that she has 
So um, that's been really good, again, as motivation for a fairly, still fairly new learning spinner, um, is to have something like that. And I don't have a copy of it with me, but Sarah Lamb also has a book out. Um, I forget the name, but you can look it up. Um, and her book covers, I think, 80 different styles of yarn, again, um, and, how to, and how to adjust your method and technique in spinning and your wheel to get those 80 different styles of yarns. Um, so join me in spinning if you're not already on the journey. You can start with a simple uh, homemade uh, spindle made out of old CDs and a dowel. Um, and I'll try to find a link to a good YouTube video on how to make a hand spindle. Um, but there's plenty of instruction, free instruction out there on the web uh, to get you started. So thanks for joining me and be back tomorrow with another episode.